Bonjour, Dobry Den. Welcome to Weekly with Olivier Vidrin. I am Olivier Vidrin. Uh, we will be together 20 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes, I will do an uh, international press review. And after 10 minutes, with a guest. I want to start with Holodomor ceremony. You know, this is for me a very strong emotion. One of my friend, Ukrainian friend, invited me two years ago to see the monument, the museum of Holodomor in Kiev. That was for me a very emotional moment. I saw thousands and thousands of candles. I saw in this museum some pictures that I it's impossible to explain the emotion on those pictures. Really when I was there the first time in the place of the museum of Holodomor, really, if you don't cry in this place, that means you have no emotion, you are not a human. Holodomor is not very well known in Europe, but in Ukraine, this is one of the biggest event of the 20th century. What's happened? What's happened there? During the Soviet Union, during the Soviet Union, the Ukrainian people died because no food. The Soviet Union is the only system who was against his own people. Yes, we can speak about a Ukrainian genocide. We don't know exactly the number of people who died. We spoke about 4 million, 6 million, 30% of the total population of Ukraine, maybe 20%, nobody really know. But if you go to the Museum of Voldemort, you don't need the exact number of the people who died. Please see the picture, see the candles, and you will understand that was a genocide. The 26th of November is the date of the ceremony to remember the victims of Holodomor. This date for the Ukrainian people is very, very important. If you come to Ukraine, ask the Ukrainians and you will see that in their family they have one person who die because of Holodomor. Can you imagine the impact? That's why the 26th of November, each year, Ukraine, Ukraine do a ceremony to never, never forget the genocide of the Ukrainian people with Holodomor. And now Ukraine want this genocide to be recognized all around the world. And that's, I think, the right way. Because that was really organized to kill the maximum of Ukrainian citizens. All the aspects of those events, because we have three Holodomors, all the, all the aspects in the 20s, in the 30s, and in the 40s, 
all the aspect is really the right definition of a genocide, then I think we must support Ukraine in this fight to push all the more, to do all the more, to, to give to all the more this status of a genocide, genocide of uh, Ukrainian people. That's the right way and we have to support uh, this fight to recognize all of the more as a genocide. Then, now, uh, during this week also, we have other uh, big, uh, big events. And one of uh, one big event is more funny, uh, that was uh, Yanukovych. Yanukovych, you know, uh, this week uh, we saw uh, that Yanukovych had some questions about um, what he did during Maidan. And I saw some articles about those um, questions. And at first, about the answers of Yanukovych. Oh my God! I, w I saw that and I said, this man is a big actor. This is a movie? Or what? Is this a comedy? You saw the answer. Come on. He's not guilty. He, he, he doesn't understand what, why uh, we ask him something. And he wants to help and he helps the Ukrainian people. Come on. This, make, this, this man, excuse me, this man must go to Hollywood and he will do big current comedy. But for me, is guilty for only one reason. Can you imagine a former president of a state who is now living in an other state and this other state is doing a war against his own state? Can you imagine that? It's impossible. He is guilty because he's in Russia, and Russia is now in war against Ukraine. You know, we don't have to, uh, to understand a lot. Yanukovych is in Russia, Russia is in war against Ukraine, that makes Yanukovych guilty. Can you imagine a French president in Germany when Germany was in war against France? Can you imagine the king of, of England in Germany when Germany was in war against England? Impossible. Then Yanukovych is in Russia and Russia is in war against Ukraine. That makes him guilty. Point. Sure. Then now I want to change and discuss also about what's happened in France. And we had two big events in France. First of all, François Fillon. François Fillon will be the candidate for the presidential elections for the right party. That's not a news. We know that François Fillon had some chances to be this candidate, but François Fillon is very, very close uh, uh, from Putin. Is very, very, I can say, friend with Putin. And that can be a problem in the future in Europe, in France, and of course also with Ukraine. But, but, I hope, and personally I think, that uh, all his speech about Putin and Russia uh, is only blah blah blah. Why? Because, remember, Trump, Trump, during uh, his campaign, uh, said a lot of a lot of things and now is changing his program then i think francois fillon if he will be elected he will change also the candidate is not the president you cannot be a president if you want to stay a, a candidate the candidate it has to win the election the president has to manage the country and i think donald trump is changing his program I think François Fillon will also change his 
program if he will be elected. And I think he will understand very quickly that Putin is not a good guy. But another very, very, very important event happened. Uh, and this event is that the uh, president of France, uh, François Hollande, will not be a candidate for the next presidential election. That's not really a surprise. You know, I give some interview, uh, interviews and I always say that I hope personally that uh, François Hollande will not be a candidate. I said that in previous interview. And yesterday, when I saw the result of uh, that uh, François, François Hollande didn't want to be a candidate, I was not surprised. Yes, because uh, he will uh, be a very bad candidate for the Socialist Party. And the Socialist Party is uh, really happy that uh, François Hollande will not be uh, the candidate for the presidential election. Then that's, that's for France, you know, that's the first time in the history of the um, Fifth Republic of uh, France that a president one don't want to be elected. This is the first president in the Fifth uh, Republic who uh, don't want to be elected. This is the first time. François Hollande is the only president uh, who will not go to be a new candidate. And, uh, but this is not a surprise, as I said, because he is not popular and he, he must give his um, a, a chance for another candidate from the Socialist Party. I think in, uh, for the Socialist Party we will have uh, Montebourg, we will speak about that in a few weeks. We will have Macron, Emmanuel Macron, and we will have also Emmanuel Valls. That will be the three biggest candidates for the Socialist Party. We will see which one will be uh, the, the one, the biggest and the winner. But now we know that François Hollande will not be a candidate for the next presidential election in France. I am very happy to receive today a friend of mine, Brian Bonner, chef editor of Kiev Post. Welcome, you. Brian. Yeah. That's a pleasure always, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and just, I want to speak with you about two points. First of all, uh, the story of Kiev Post, because you are, uh, you are the chef editor of Kiev Post. And I, I want to speak about what, what, what was the beginning of Kiev Post. And uh, after that, we will discuss about the Tiger Conference event. But let's start with Kiev Post. What was your, your, uh, the beginning of this story, famous story of this magazine? Well, the, the short story is it was started October 18th, 1995 by American Jed Sundin. A few years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it was felt in all the uh, former Soviet capitals that an English language newspaper was needed. And boy, was he right. He started it and we're still going strong 21 years later. We've only had two owners, Jed Sundin, the first one and the founder, American owned it for 14 years. Now Mohammed Zahor, mm -hmm. a British citizen, has owned it for the last seven years. So we, uh, we're very grateful. We're, we're still in business 21 years, despite all the, all the challenges that Ukraine presents news media. But, but, but this, this magazine is very, very famous now in, in Ukraine. And uh, do you, you, you will develop some other product with Kiev Post or you, because you have this Tiger Conference, right. really. This is a nice event. I was there. Uh, can you discuss about, uh, about, can we discuss about that? Because really, uh, this conference is very important for Ukraine because we can meet a lot of very important politicians, not from only from Ukraine, but from uh, other, other countries. Can you, can, can you present that? Well, we, what was the beginning of this story? The beginning of this was a actually born out of necessity. You know, the media market here is very oligarch dominated. We are not oligarch owned. The media here is heavily subsidized. We are mostly a commercial mm -hmm. uh, entity. In, in the decline of uh, print advertising, we were looking at other things that we could do that would be complementary to our motto, which is independence, community, trust. The, the uh, events like Tiger Conference and other conferences, employment fairs and other events, turned out to be a natural thing. We found out we we're very good at organizing events. 
We know who, the, who, who are good speakers on different topics. And so five years ago, we started this Tiger Conference uh, with that hope that we would bring in international and national leaders to discuss public policy. Our first Tiger Conference in 2012 was uh, keynoted by uh, Mikhail Saakashvili, who was then yeah, yeah, the president he, he, of Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was by a guy named Petro Poroshenko, who was then the, the economy pre, minister yeah, under yeah. President Viktor Yanukovych. And at this Tiger Conference, the one that we just finished November 29th, you saw that uh, uh, President Saakashvili was there yeah. as the keynote speaker yep. in a much different role, now in an opposition role. And I think that he... Uh, I think he gave a very interesting message. What is very interesting in this Tiger Conference is like, for me, a soft pour. Uh, because you, 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 you put some messages in, the, in, in those conference, and really, uh, that's very important to have those conferences. Because this is a meeting between men and women who want to do something for Ukraine, and not for, only for Ukraine, for Europe also. And uh, uh, what will be uh, for you, what, what is for you the, the, the first target of, of, of uh, Tiger Conference? Ukraine, Europe, values? It's both. You can look at it as a low-budget uh, yes conference, the Alta mm -hmm. European strategy. I mean, Victor Pinchuk spends a lot of money on his conference. We don't have those resources. We rely on people who do come abroad, you know, uh, 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 you know, donate their time, donate their expertise to talk about the important issues. And this is the fifth. And from now on until the year 2020, I think our theme is going to be Ukraine's goals for 2020 mm -hmm. and how how much progress uh, Ukraine is making uh, and and what are the obstacles and who is gets credit, who gets blame? Because you know as well as I do, Ukraine has set very ambitious goals by 2020 yeah. to be ready to join NATO, visa-free travel, doubling national income, being a top 20 investment des destination. These are all very, very official, very ambitious goals. And I think we need to uh, uh, pay close attention to uh, whether these are realistic or these are just pie-in-the-sky dreams. That Yeah, but this, this Tiger Conference show really, uh, for me, you know, you know, uh, as me, that the, 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 in Ukraine, the problem is not the target, it's the strategy to go to the target, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I was in, in, uh, in the last uh, Tiger Conference, and I saw that, like, for me, it's like a, a think tank, this conference. That means uh, we met... Uh, a lot of people, and those people are ready to work together in the same way. Then, for me, what what are what are the results you uh, are expecting from uh, from this uh, this event? Well, I mean, I think that in today's twenty-four page edition of the Key Post, I think we really define clearly uh, uh, what came out of it. We we simplified, we cut through the uh, the ambiguities to put a clear message of where we are today. And I, as much as what is said, you know, at the panels is important, even more important, I think, is the networking, the community atmosphere. As you can see, we keep it all to one day and one night. Yeah. We have lots of breaks for networking. This is the community that we have, and you'll see, you know, very many good people who are in government or were in government, they're in business or they're in NGOs or they're ambassadors and so forth. And this is the kind of community we're building. This is the opportunity that we all have to talk to each other. And this year we added some things. Yeah. I mean, we had the most speakers we ever had, 30. We had six panels, the most mm -hmm. panels we ever had. And then we did a uh, nice uh, event at the in night, at the night, uh, Kipo oh, wow. CEO Luke Chene, yeah. 30 under 30, yeah. hosted by your friend, Sergei Velichansky. Yeah. And, that, and yeah. that was to, you know, so, so often the, the, the message about Ukraine is, is challenges or depressing or, or bad news. But when you look at the, the kind of leaders that mm -hmm. Ukraine has coming up uh, in the new generation, it makes you very hopeful, I think. I, I, I saw in this small, uh, small book about uh, the, the, the Tiger Conference, the last one, for me, when I was there, uh, one of the biggest part was this cere ceremonial awards for those people. Some of them are really incredible, a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them uh, are, came back from the front. And for me, really, this last part, the award ceremony, I think that's, that was like a, to recognize the soul of Ukraine, you know. For me, that was very, very um, 
a lot of emotion in in the, in this event. I, I saw a lot of person who really are fighting now for for Ukraine. I, I think you this Tiger conference, the last one was really to give these awards to those simple people. Uh, that that was great, really, really great. And you you will do something like that in the next Tiger conference because. The link with those simple person who are fighting for Ukraine. Oh yeah, I think this is going to be a permanent event, and you're right. It brought tears to your eyes when you see a, a volunteer ambulance driver yeah. at the war front who came up in a wheelchair because she was injured yeah. in a bad accident. When you see the soldiers come back from the front or who had just recently been discharged. When you see a young HIV activist who has yeah. been HIV positive since birth. When you see gold, uh, you know. When you see Olympic medalists. Uh, when you see great entrepreneurs, it's uh, it's very powerful experience, and you recognize how many people here are sacrificing their lives and sacrificing uh, everything just to build this country. And so I think we're going to keep this as a permanent event. We don't claim exclusivity. We hope everybody honors their top 30 under 30 or whatever they want to honor. But I think it's very important that we recognize people. Stop for a night and say, listen, these people are doing great work. Let's Let's and, give him credit. And that's really, for me, that was a plus, a, a, a good, good result of this, uh, of the, of this uh, Tiger conference. You know, because I cannot say that every conference you have a lot of person like uh, Stakashvili, but in a lot of conference, they don't recognize, they don't push uh, uh, the, those simple people uh, on, the, on, on, on the front. And you did that. And for me, that was really, really uh, the best hand in this evening uh, for Tiger Conference. And uh, I am very happy that you will do that again uh, and you will support uh, this, this, uh, this idea because for me that was the best part of, the, of oh, these thanks. days. Well, it's great to hear. <laughs> that guarantees it's going to go on. And it was a tough choice. Uh, as I said, and I, I believe we could have picked uh, 300, 3,000, 30,000. There are simply that many young people here who are, are, who are showing who are going to be tomorrow's leaders. And so I think Ukraine's future, uh, I, I certainly feel more optimistic and I hope everybody else does about it when you see these kinds of people. And you know, my TV show really will support this type of event because uh, my TV show is here to support Ukraine and really, I am. If I can do something, <laughs> I will do. I will uh, because I support you. You're this, already this doing world. it in many ways, <laughs> and we thank you for your support and, and the partnership. I guess that we have with you uh, in the Keep Post. So. Thank you very much, thank Brian. You. Thanks and for having me. On. See you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. I hope you are happy to to be with us during those 20 minutes. I hope to see you next Sunday. Au revoir. And remember, never give up.